All right, my noble steed. Onward to victory. Move, mighty spigot. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Recap Review. Today we're going to be taking a look at set number 8994, the Baranis V7. The set contains approximately 263 pieces, was released in the summer of 2009, and during time of release was approximately $40. Alright, <clears throat> we've got a chariot. Now before we get into the review, let me get my disclaimer out of the way. Just because there are pros and cons doesn't necessarily mean that they are my personal opinion. I do my best to make these videos as objective as possible, and as such, any and all comments should be taken as either community opinions or as objective facts about the set I can represent here on camera. So please, unless I explicitly say so, do not assume that anything here are my personal opinions. Okay? Awesome. Let's get into the review. Now, story-wise, Samad here, he's the writer, he is from the now-defunct Iron Tribe that was pretty much dismantled by a certain dream-eating monster. He drives the, this chariot here, it's called the Baranus, and this creature, this is the Spicket, the two-headed Spicket. I did not make that name up. So let's go ahead and look at this piece by piece, and we're going to start with the rider, Samad. Come on, there you go. We're going to go ahead and move this guy out of the way. Just go down there for a little bit. All right, so this, this is Samad. Now, Samad, he's just a standard Agori. There's nothing really too interesting about him in particular. As far as the color scheme is concerned, it is rather consistent. We have the silver, black, and the orange. And, you know, that's fine. A lot of people seem to like his color scheme. That is the kind of sort of technical color of the Iron Tribe. As far as recolors are concerned, we may have a few. I'm fairly certain these arms... The upper arms here are actually recolors. I believe they're new and orange, however I may be mistaken. Uh, additionally, we also have these pieces here. I think these are new recolors to Bionicle, again, may be mistaken. And we have this tentacle piece. This is from Kalma, and it's new in black. So there is that. We also have a new piece. We have the helmet. Now, helmet. this helmet's used in two sets, this one and another one. but. This is the only helmet introduced with the vehicles that isn't double-sided, so there's no face on the back, just right here. So, the people really do like Samad for a couple of reasons. He is a little bit unique. He does have this kind of shoulder armor going on. Of course, he does have this backpack, and this is the counter for the game. And I'll go over that in the 2009 overview. So, that is there. He also has a sword, giant sword. Now, people do like the sword because it's a kind of new and interesting weapon. Or they also don't because it's slightly large and unwieldy. Functionality-wise, he does have the Thorn Axe Launcher. That works like so. There we go. And into Oblivion it goes. Just put that right back there. So there is that. Some reasons people don't like Samad. Well, obviously enough, he is a standard Agori build. No articulation aside from the two in the legs, two in the arms, and one in the head. And he doesn't have any knees or elbows. He does have his hands at the very least. And then he has this whip. People do like the whip. That is kind of unique. However, some do not like the red pins. Or the red axles, the blue pins, like right here. And the open axles, like so. But that's pretty much some odd. Let's go ahead and get into another aspect of the set. And we'll go ahead and talk about the spigot, since that is a living creature. Now what we're going to need to do, so once I bring this on the camera, there we go. going to need to detach it. We'll do so. Like this. Cut. There you go. We're going to move the Brannis off to the side for just a moment. No, no, no. You're going to get off screen, don't it? There we go. Okay. So here we have the Spicket. Now, this is interesting because it's a creature. We don't get very many creatures in 2009. And we can see the primary color is green. It's... I don't really know what to describe it as or what to compare it to. It's just a bar magna creature. So, as far as new recolors are concerned, not entirely sure. I don't believe I don't believe that's new. And if it is, then there you go, pointing it out. 
but I don't think so. I think we got that in Maxilos. What is new is this new helmet piece, and this is actually in one of two sets, this one and another one, and this time it's molded with green and lime. And this is another double-sided one. We see a face there, and we see a face here, and it's interesting because this side, we can see, has Barak eyes. Barak eyes are red. Meanwhile, the Gladiatorian head that they sit on is orange. So, functionality-wise, we just have some articulation, two in the necks, and the standard three in the limbs. And, you know, that does work all well and good. Posing may be a little bit of a pill, because it's a creature of sorts, it's not the standard humanoids that we're all used to. Build-wise, people don't seem to too terribly mind it. I mean, it does, it has a solid build. However, it has a lot of weird angles, like just jutting off of it. It doesn't look very cohesive to a lot of people. The color scheme is additionally all over the place. It has some dark green, some light green, black, normal silver, gunmetal silver. It's, it's kind of all over the place. Not a lot of people like it for its color scheme. Additionally, the articulation on the neck, while this part is generally fine, it's this part. It can't raise the heads above that. that about, that's about as high as they will go. So there is that. Additionally, some things people don't like. There are some gaps, as we can see right in there. Obviously, this dorsal fin, we can see there are gaps in there as well. Right in here. And here. People don't like the armoring on this leg in particular, because it's just two Borok guys that have been shoved on it. Additionally, there is no armoring here. Now, one could make the argument, well, it's just supposed to be a creature. Well, it's also attached to a giant battle chariot, so it should have some armoring. And that's really about it. Uh, Spigot, not really the most liked about uh, this part of the set. It's just a weird amalgamation of things and odd coloration, the weird build, a lot of gaps, a lot of red axles, blue pins, and the like. So people do have some trouble enjoying the set. We also have this weird bar right here. There's a huge gap, and then there's just the bar for the heads. So the Spigot's weird. That is the general consensus. So let's go ahead and look over the non-living part of the set, the Baranus. Now, the Baranus V7 is, of course, a battle chariot. I don't remember the exact story details regarding it, but I'm sure you guys can remind me. Functionality-wise, obviously, it does roll, and it rolls actually really well. The chariot looks really good. Most people really do like how it appears. It's very well armored. Uh, it does have these that kind of come up. So you can make it look even more royal, or you can kind of just detail it like so. It's got the chain for the spigot, so the spigot can I kind of just bring it along. As far as these pieces are concerned, I'm fairly certain they're not new, but they are new to Bionicle. So, the build, it's about what you, you can come to expect for a chariot. It is rather gappy, sure, but you're really only going to be looking at it from this angle. And it does look like a really menacing battle chariot, you know. You can have these blades over here, kind of just cut up other tires, and again, the rolling is really, really smooth. So the only issues people really have with it, it's a lot of different colors of gray and gunmetal. Additionally, we do have some blue pins that are sticking out, as well as some open axles, so it makes it kind of look unfinished at times. So let's go ahead and connect everything back together again. First, we'll go ahead and take the spigot, and that's fairly simple. You just go ahead, clip it on like so. There you go. And then we have Samad. Now, you can put him on the chariot one of several different ways. Because back here, you can see we have three points to connect. And then we have the three per foot uh, for the pinholes. So you can really do it any way you want. I'm sure there's a set way in the instructions, but you don't really need to follow it. So there's a lot of options here to just customize and play around. And it looks really, it looks rather good. It looks like it's a menacing, evil character with his whip, and he's driving his spigot to go and pull the chariot, and that functions rather well. So as a whole, people may not like the color scheme of most things. There's a lot of different shades of gunmetal and gray and metal. The spigot is a completely different color than the rider. However, we have seen kind of vehicle and rider combinations of this kind of coloration. You know, the green vehicle and then the orange rider, the Rocco. However, most people find the spigot to be really weird. It's unorthodox. It's just awkwardly built. The chariot is well received. 
Obviously enough, it has a lot of gaps, it has a lot of open axles, and in some areas it doesn't look completely finished. However, it is a battle chariot and it looks rather menacing. And to be fair, as far as vehicles are concerned, it's a rather unique look. And finally, Samad. While he is a standard gory build, and that has its own pitfalls, he does do something a little bit more unique with these kind of shoulder pieces and the weaponry he has. So, that's about it. What do you guys think? Do you like Samad? Do you like the spigot? Do you like the chariot? Do you like the whole thing? Feel free to let me know either in the comments below or on the message boards at board.tdbpodcast.com. Thank you all very much for watching, and join me next time when I look over the menacing Thornatus V9. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you then.